every single person has mental health. Not necessarily every person has, you know, a diagnosable mental illness, but mental health is something that we all have and everyone's journey is very, very different. So I was wondering if you could start us off by telling us a little bit about your own mental health journey, what that's looked like for you. Sure. So, well, I think I've always um, battled with a little bit of depression um, mm -hmm. since I was a kid. And, you know, there was a lot of turmoil um, in my life growing up and in my household. And though I was lucky to always have a roof over my head and, you know, food on my plate, I think circumstances led me to having, you know, these ups and downs. <laughs> and um, later on, I got into an abusive relationship, which put me into a further depression, which I didn't even realize was happening at the time. My ex-boyfriend uh, had me work as a stripper, coerced me into working as a stripper, and then had me uh, hand over my money every night and exploited me and abused me verbally, financially, and emotionally. And so that put me in a, in a very like, um, downward place. I felt a lot of shame. I felt a lot of guilt. I felt a lot of regret. My family didn't know. None of my family or friends knew anything about it. So I had been isolated. I think the first part of healing, so there was a lot of like steps of recovery, but I think the first part of healing was discovering what self-care meant. And that was for me at the time, um, I wasn't allowed to read so by my ex. So like I started reading again. I always loved reading. Um, I started teaching myself how to drive. My ex had told me I'd be a really terrible driver and that I shouldn't drive. And these are all like, you know, uh, isolation tactics and like trying to keep you kind of controlled. And then uh, I got a computer and I got social media and I reconnected with my friends and my family. And then after that, you know, after learning how to drive and all that stuff, um, I went to India and I studied yoga and meditation. And that really helped me. It, it brought me back to music. That was like a huge point of recovery for me as well. My family and my friends really supported me. So I started telling my story to my friends and my family and realizing that, you know, they did love me and that they did want to support me and that, and that I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to Codependence Anonymous. So I started to find groups outside of my friends and family for help that would maybe be able to help me with the issues that I was presently dealing with stripping my ego even more and my pride, I went and I decided to find also a therapist and that has been a huge monumental shift in my mental health. So it's kind of gone in, in many steps and it's been an extremely rewarding experience. And honestly, like so many people are like, like, do you ever wish that you could have done things differently? And I'm like, not really, because I learned so much, you know, and I feel like I'm so much of a stronger person now. For sure. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for sharing that. I know it's never easy talking about those things, um, especially when it comes to mental health and the things that have a negative impact on our mental health. Um, so thank you so much for that. I went through a very, very big depression in high school. When I was in it, of course, I, I thought, you know, I would never wish this on anyone. Like, I just wasn't myself at all. And I lost all love for music and everything for a period of time. But now I realize I've learned so many skills and I've learned so much more about myself, even though it's awful. Like I'm glad that these things happened because it has made me who I am today. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for sharing as well. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Um, awesome. Do you want to dive right into the first song? Yeah, let's do it. So here comes my brother Louis to the rescue. <laughs> um, this song is the first track off my debut album called Chapter Through the Come Up, and people can find it on all the streaming platforms. It's called You Don't Know Me. Wonderful. I've got a lot of drive. i got a lot of stakes in the face. So you don't come. i got a lot of lines. You play a lot of tricks in your face, see the ball and everybody say, hey, it's me, trying to catch my spot tonight, they're sick off, got a little smart, got a little hard, got a little sharp, got a lot of heart need. daddy say, if I make them shine, see me. 
your back. You need them carrots for them boys, for them boys, for them boys. Thank you all for joining, guys. I'm definitely guilty of getting my sense of self-worth from the things that I do. This is something, you know, I'm working on. Uh, just knowing that I am worthy and deserving of love, no matter how productive I'm being. So I wanted to ask you, what does self-worth mean to you? And what has your journey been like with regards to your own self-worth? That is also an ongoing journey that I think lasts forever as we age and as we, you know, get older and, and become more experienced, mm -hmm. we have to deal with different challenges. I think a lot of women's self-worth tend to revolve a lot about around their beauty and their youth. And I know for me, that was a big thing. And so I actually just released a song, a single called Worth. It really exemplifies that experience you know mm -hmm. I remember growing up and I just wanted to be natural like I didn't care for makeup and stuff like that and and I would always try to tell my mother that she was beautiful without makeup and mm -hmm. when I got into the strip club you know a lot of people were getting augmentations and Botox and things like that and I still you know was like no I'm good like to each their own but I'm 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 okay like I'm good with being all natural and then I got into the music industry and everybody started telling me that I needed to hurry, that I needed to, mm -hmm. you know, that I was running out of time, that I was aging and that I was somehow not as valuable anymore. Yeah. I started to believe that. And so for the first time in my life, I started to not really care for, um, you know, how I looked. I would only see the, the flaws in me mm -hmm. and more so and not as much like um, the idea of aging and wrinkling because that wasn't really a big issue for me mm -hmm. growing up. I remember when I was 16 years old saying to my friend, I couldn't wait till I got old. And she was like, what? Everybody wants to stay young. Why do you want to be old? And I was like, um, because I, I, you know, when you get old, then you know who really loves you for you and not for how you look, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I had told her. Yeah. So like, I never really you know, I wasn't too worried about that, but it was this idea of not reaching this pinnacle of success, not being, as you said, productive yeah. enough, um, that started to make me feel less worthy. And it's an ongoing process where I have to realize, and also that I learned in Codependence Anonymous was like, that you are worthy just being you. And, you know, doing these kind of like self affirmations and reminding yourself of that is really important because you're not worthy because you're giving someone money or you feed them every day or like, you know, all these things that we do or because of how much money you have or what you own or, you know, how many likes you have on Instagram. It's really about you. It's just who you are and, and the energy that you're giving to the earth and to yourself. More people are looking to the arts to lift them up. Uh, with being in quarantine with these additional stressors of COVID-19. So what role has music played for you in your own well-being? For me, all art. It's been all art because at one point my art, my music wasn't in my control and, you know, I wasn't allowed to perform and I wasn't, my, you know, my hard drives were stolen. And, and so at one point, I, like yourself, I didn't, you know, I'd lost my love for music or I didn't just was too much trauma surrounded it. Mm -hmm. But I've always found creation to be very important to my soul. You know, it's kind of been my savior. So when music was taken from me, I started learning how to paint. I started teaching myself, you know. And um, when I found music again, which I was eventually brought back to, um, that also helped me get through some really difficult times. I was able to express my pain through my music and then when the world shut down, 
30 days, not even 30 days after I'd released my debut album, which was a huge, you know, mm -hmm. weight on me. I was like, oh my gosh, how could this happen? It took my whole life to get to this point. And then, you know, pandemic, I can't do anything about it. Yeah, of course. Um, I decided to create another project because mm -hmm. it really is just a way for me to stay sane. Like creating music has always been my peace, you know, when my parents would fight or I would find something, you know, sad on TV when I was a kid, I'd go to my room and I'd cry and I'd sing to myself I'd make up songs, you know, mm -hmm. and that is um, part of my healing process. Oh, well, that's just about it for today. Is there any last thoughts or insights that you would want to leave with all of our wonderful, wonderful viewers? Yes. So actually the name of all the songs on the record on interlude 19 they make a sentence and it says death don't wait for no one so live a story worth telling living a story worth telling was a huge thing in my life when i came back from india you know i wanted to live a life that was full of experience you know we always see things as kind of black or white good or bad but i wanted to just to just be filled with experiences so mm, the whole concept is to just live your life fully, you know, just be present for it. All the quote unquote good and quote unquote bad. It's all life and it's all experience and just be present for it. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us today's story. It's been wonderful watching you sing and just talking with you. I loved it so much. And I think it was the perfect way to wrap up Jack Music Sessions for the summer. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had a great time with you too.